COVID-19 is an ongoing global pandemic that originated in Hubei province of China in 2019. This pandemic ideally overturned the world, and the normal sequence of doing things was acutely disrupted. For the first time in many years, people's freedom to be anywhere was curtailed. All of a sudden, we all start walking around uh, with our faces covered in masks as if we were surgeons. Today's video looks at how COVID-19 has impacted over the African continent over the past one year since the emergence of the pandemic. For new viewers, welcome to Walk Africa Fun Facts. We got Africa covered for you. Please subscribe to our channel. Let us keep the fire burning. Let us all bear in mind that as of the eve of December 2020, when this video was published, that the total infections on the African continent add up to well over 2.1 million people, while close to 1.8 million people have recovered from the virus. Over 50,000 people have died from the coronavirus disease. The impact of COVID-19 can, uh, can be assessed basing on the following major pointers. The health and psychological well-being of the Africans, the African social life, the African economic life, the education sector, and lastly, international relations between Africa and overseas nations. Number one, the health and well-being of Africans. COVID-19 first entered Africa in Egypt, spreading rapidly across the continent. Panic gripped Africa by her throat and like the rest of the world, there was widespread desperation, fear and anxiety. We can all attest to the fact that at some point, coughing or sneezing in public places was really frowned upon. A greater impact was on those people who were quarantined. This was a whole new dimension of uh, psychological torture. Infection in itself creates fear. Uh, the same as thinking about the likelihood of one having infected his or her family members. The future is uncertain, adding on to that anxiety. The psychological impact also extends to health workers who are in some sense under an implied quarantine. They are at the front line, always having to work full time, at times without sufficient protective gear. Several doctors across the continent have died while combating this disease, alongside other 50,000 people on the continent. Doctors in Kenya are scheduled for a strike, for example, on the 7th of December over remuneration tassels with the government, a phenomenon also observed in other African countries like South Africa. The leading countries by cases in Africa are South Africa at 0.7 million cases, uh, we have Morocco at 0.3 million cases, and Egypt at uh, 114,000 cases. African nations are currently going through a second wave of infection. Number two. African social life. Like any other people in the population, Africans are social people. Countries in Africa had, had, uh, have had their various authorities impose lockdowns, a good example being Kenya, which had imposed local lockdowns in the metropolitan area of Nairobi, Mombasa, and another lockdown of its uh, one-time Isle epicenter. This limited the intermingling of people and this has cut off the traditional mass religious gatherings and all manner of ceremonies. That situation is unlike Africa, and yet no one is sure when the normalcy might well resume. Number three, the African economic life. Africa is one busy hub of economic activity, with both endogenous and exogenous relationships being affected. The endogenous relationship describes trade and economic parameters that have centered or that are centered on the African countries as individuals and also amongst uh, uh, the Africa and the rest of the world. Now, lockdowns, for example, prevent the traditional free movement of factors of production, creating uneven demand and prices, and the entire prices have become disoriented. Many farms have had to close down and uh, unemployment is really going on up very high. Now, low incomes have driven millions to poverty. Examples of worst hit corporations in Africa include the South African Pretoria of Advocates as well as the Com Air. Bus and restaurants owners across Africa share the tragedy of perpetual close downs. Most farms are filing for bankruptcy and may never recover in the post COVID era. Small and medium sized enterprises, which are actually employing well over 80% of the populations in most African economies. They also face a challenge of collapse during this pandemic. Traditionally, the SMEs are faced by the challenge of limited capital, limited current basis, and limited uh, access to a wider scope of the market. However, 
the zoo and scholars as well as contributors in the business world and the front four strategies such enterprises can employ to fairly mitigate their predicament. They include uh, leverage on newer technologies to reach a widely untapped but high potential digital market, development of clear market strategies to reach out the poorly tapped niches as well as maintain the current market tappings, and number three, promoting operational efficiency which leads to effective financial prioritization and scrap reduction. Number four, developing internal skills among employees and focusing on leadership. Number four, the area is education. Like everywhere else in the world, education on the African continent has been disrupted due to the lockdowns and social distancing guidelines. Students across many countries in the continent are marking almost one whole year out of class. In the worst cases, whole academic years will be lost and education institutions might have to restart their curricula. In a country like Kenya, pregnancy among uh, school-going girls has been on the rise. The level of school dropout cases is expected to surge while the pandemic lasts. Number five, impact on international relations. Areas of international relations surrounding this pandemic include aid that has traditionally been advanced to poor African and Latin American nations. In brief, as the cases surged in the leading donors like the United States, aid from such countries in form of COVID-19 test kits, personal protective equipment, PPE, facial masks and drugs have been curtailed. Such countries have experienced challenges to combat the disease. There are also allegations that governments across Africa are mismanaging funds advanced to them by the World Health umbrella bodies and their associations. That depends cracks on the bonds that exist between the bodies. That is it for today's analysis on the impact of COVID-19 on Africa over the past year of existence, 2020. Thanks for watching that video. To get similar updates and matters that form the heart of Africa, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Share this with uh, friends and turn on the notification bell to ensure that you don't miss out on the next informative videos. Bye and take care.